What mm-hmm. made you decide on multifamily? And then I guess the second part of the question is, I know you had started passively as well. What made you go active? Got you. So I started like wholesaling. Um, I did like a few deals doing that. And mainly like my transition to multifamily was with a small multifamily, so a duplex. And just the, 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 the game changer for me was... Welcome back, everyone, to the Passive Road to Retirement podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Jarrett of Jarrett Capital. We're a multifamily investment company on a mission to give more people the opportunity to improve their financial futures. Today, I'm joined by Edward Simonette, who moved to the States from Nassau, Bahamas at 18 years old. He's been active in real estate since 2016. And at just 22 years old, he started interning, reading, and researching everything he could on real estate investing while still in college. Edward is currently a full-time multifamily real estate investor. In 2017, he he started his first holding company, Blue Marlin Equity Group, and purchased his first duplex and four unit. In 2018, he purchased a 32 and 75 unit apartment as a passive partner. And in 2019, he purchased a 36 unit as a sponsor and successfully refinanced the property in 2021. He was able to increase the value from 400,000 to 1.5 million, increasing the property's value by $1.1 million in just two years. Recently, he just purchased a 48 unit B-class apartment complex, bringing his holdings to 90 units in the Birmingham, Alabama area. He also owns a property management company and at just 27 years old, has successfully closed on nine real estate transactions. Eddie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Andrew. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Definitely. Great to have you on. So maybe you could tell us just a little bit more about your background and you know what motivated you at such a young age to get started. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, originally, I'm from Nassau, Bahamas. So if folks aren't familiar, it's in the Caribbean. It's about, uh, about a 30-minute plane ride. Uh, from Miami. And, uh, you know, just growing up, you know, my dad, he owned a, a real estate company, but it was more on the land land side. Uh, okay. And then also some sales. Um, my mom's side of the family, they owned uh, some rental property. So as a kid, you know, um, I was always kind of, you know, looking at the real estate injury industry as a possible avenue I could get into it in the future. I was always kind of business oriented. So mm-hmm. if I wasn't going to be like the next LeBron James, I knew I wanted to, <laughs> you know, own a business. So, mm-hmm. you know, okay. fast forward, I, I I moved to the States at 18 uh, to play tennis, ended up getting a scholarship uh, to play collegiate tennis D2. Uh, oh. That's how I ended up in the state of Alabama, you know, uh, but basically, you know, I mean, as far as like how I got into it, that's kind of like what uh, drive me to get into real estate. And then also in college, my junior and my senior year, it was like a real estate, you know, those weekend two, three day events that they had, it was free. And I went to that. And then, and then that's when I kind of put the pieces together because I was studying accounting in school and like, you can just kind of tell from like my, you know, my, my voice right now and like my energy, like I, you know, I, I, I did not see myself being an accountant, like for the next 20 <laughs> or 30 years. Like I, yeah. I'm one of those guys, I got to be out there in the field. I got to be moving around. So yeah. naturally, like once I saw like what the real estate industry was and how I can possibly get in and you know, I just fell in love with it. That's awesome. Yeah. Kind of, kind of similar stories. I started out uh, younger as well. So it's great, great industry. And I guess, so you started in real estate your father had a company. So you just kind of, did you learn from him a little bit as well? Or did you just, you know, what made you realize, I guess, real estate is just where it's at? Yeah. So, I mean, definitely I would say, you know, just growing up and seeing the flexibility with his time, you know, that kind of got me interested, but I didn't really, you know, it wasn't like the mom, you know, the, the dad and son type, you know, business thing. It wasn't really like that. Mm-hmm. What really got me into it was, you know, just actually going to that conference and like hearing the success stories of the people, you know, that attended, that was able to buy their first rental property and fix and flip. And they were talking about getting into these properties with little to no money down. Mm-hmm. So someone like me in college, you know, I didn't I really have any money. So I was like, okay, well, this may be a good option for me to, you know, just get into the industry. Because, you know, I think a lot of people, uh, when they think about real estate, they automatically assume you have to have hundreds and thousands of dollars in a bank account to get started. So that kind of like, 
that conference made me understand that, you know, you can get in, you just have to use your head and, you know, be creative. Mm -hmm. The concept of OPM, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Eddie, I'd love to hear about this, uh, this 48 unit deal you just did. Maybe you can tell us how you found it, you know, how you financed it and just, you know, all the details you can for our listeners. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, this deal, you know, I found the same way that I found like the last few deals I've done uh, just off market, you know, direct to seller, just to give some, you know, context. Uh, I only focus on the Birmingham, Alabama uh, metro area. And I just went the approach of investing where I live. So that's kind of like the approach sure. I took. And uh, basically, I've looked at over 500 apartment complexes in the area, man. So that's kind of uh -huh. like how I started out. I didn't really have like this complicated system. You know, it's just it was just me, you know, just going on Google Maps, uh, identifying a zip code I like, and then just starting to like uh, get a route together and start to drive the properties. And then, you know, that's kind of like how I did it. And, you know, over the span of from now, I mean, from 2017 to now, I've looked at like 500 plus apartments easy. So just wow. from doing that, you know, my first few years, I was able to compile this large database. So mm -hmm. now it's just like revisiting that database, following up with uh, potential sellers. And that's actually how I got this deal. So, you know, I, I had them in my database. I sent them some mailers, you know, never got a response. So I was like, you know what? Well, let me take the time to actually try to get on a phone call with them, right? right. So I looked at, um, I just Googled the name of the apartment complex. I was able to find the number for the property manager. And I just reached out to him, you know, and I just was like, you know, just, hey, I'm, you know, I'm interested in this property. Is there any way you can get me in touch with the owner? And literally that's how I got in touch with them. Wow. And um, let's see. Yeah, they reached out to me. We talked a little bit and then I added them on LinkedIn, right? Yeah. So LinkedIn works. They added them on LinkedIn and that's how we got our first like true dialogue about the possibility of buying a property. So that's, cool. that's how I was able to find it and gain interest in it. We went back on uh, back and forth about like 30-ish days on the price. We finally agreed to a price. And then I uh, purchased this deal, you know, just with a 506B syndication. So that's the method I use. Mm -hmm. And as far as financing, because we got the deal at such a great price, man, like about 1% like cap rate lower, I mean, higher than what we bought, it, uh, that would have, the market would have done. So wow. basically the market cap in that area was 6.1 and we bought the property around like 7.04. So we went in, you know, having like that spread, you know, and we still did a reversion cap at the end, you know, just just to make sure that we were underwriting conservatively. But I mean, I just brought that up to say, like, we got the deal at a great price and we were able to actually get an agency loan day one on this project. So without doing any improvements, the project was cash flowing uh, historically good enough to where the agency debt, which is like one of the hardest uh, types of debt to get on multifamily, mm -hmm. but also like has most of the, the best favor, most of the favorable terms on it, like low interest rates, longer amortization. We was able to get this loan day one because we bought a property at such a great price and because right. it was operating so good, you know, off of the historical financials. Mm -hmm. So 7.1 cap rated. This is October of 2021. It's pretty unheard of right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. And like I said, it's it a great area. So this one was kind of like a gold mine, man. Like uh, you're talking about a seller that uh, was mom and pop owner. They've owned the property for like 20 years. You know, mortgage is paid off. But, you know, contrary to like the story you usually hear, like, you know, being a lot of deferred maintenance, they actually took great care of the property, man. So I, I you know, I had to, my, my business plan was to do this huge reposition like my previous 36 unit deal mm -hmm. it was more just uh management play you know and, and uh, just taking the momentum that the seller gave on the property and implementing our own touch on it right so sure. mm -hmm. so you got uh, the agency financing on it so it was stabilized asset at the yeah. time maybe you could just kind of tell the listeners what a stabilized asset means and and that's why you got the the loan you did Yes. So basically, you know, a stabilized uh, uh, property is something that's uh, usually over 90% uh, physical occupancy uh, is something that, you know, majority of the rents are being collected is no bad, like not a large amount of bad debt on the property, you know, and has been doing this for the past year to two years. Right. right. So that's what would be more considered a stabilized property. Now, a property that may have a lower than average like vacancy rate, so you may have a property that may be a little bit more distressed, 
you know, it may have like, you know, roofs that are missing shingles. You may have, you know, the property isn't fully occupied. You know, that property wouldn't be considered stabilized. So this mm-hmm. property, you know, we're buying it, you know, it's a hundred percent occupied full, you know, all, everything is full, you know, and then now we're just going in and, you know, taking it a step up from what it's, done, it's doing right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Sounds like a great plan. Is your plan just a five-year hold that you're you shooting for? Or? So this one is a seven year hold. Um, yeah. Yeah. So as far as like our renovations uh, plans, you know, we're going to do some small exterior improvements to the property. So like new signage, repainting the parking lot, uh, doing some water conservation. So going to replace the toilets with like low flow toilets, uh, shower heads and aerators. Yep. Uh, as, as the tenants roll out of the units, we're going to go ahead and like, you know, put our touch on it. So, you know, new flooring, uh, new appliances as needed you know, and just spruce it up a little bit, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's nothing out of the way. You know, we're going to do some landscaping on the property, you know, yeah. take care of some of the smaller deferred maintenance items. But, you know, we're not looking at like, just like, you know, just rehabbing and like, you know, 20, 20 yeah. units at once. Yeah. yeah, it's more like, it's more like strategic, Andrew, like more like mm-hmm. strategic planning on how we're going to go about the, the rehab and like value add. Nice. Mm-hmm. Now you have a great YouTube channel. Um, Thank you. It documents your your journey. So, are you planning on uh, showing your rehab and your progress with this property, or what? You know, what do you maybe you could touch on that and what you're what you're doing on there as well? Oh yeah, absolutely. So, man, I like you, you just took the words out of my mouth, man. Like, I I haven't even gotten into the the business plan yet, and I've already taken videos and everything like that. So, <laughs> to anyone listening, like you, yeah, you can just check on my YouTube channel. I just like to document my progress from start to finish. So I'll definitely be doing it on this deal. That's just my name, Eddie Simonette. But like, I I like to put a lot of content out there that can help others as well. So, you know, maybe it may be something that you can get from like me sharing my journey that you can, you know, implement to your own real estate journey and it may be able to help you out. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's definitely out there for anyone that's interested. Yeah. And I would definitely recommend everybody check it out. So a lot of good information on there. Thank you. Now, uh, well, what information would you give, say somebody's just starting out, maybe never done a real estate deal before. Uh, what advice would you give somebody that's just starting out? Yeah. So if you just started out, I would say the first thing to do, you know, is to educate yourself about, you know, what specific type of real estate you want to invest in. Right. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's just with real estate is, is multiple avenues. And like for me starting out, uh, a challenge I had was what you call analysis paralysis. I was just looking at trying to fix and flip a deal and in the evening, try to wholesale one. <laughs> and the next day I'll be trying to buy a rental and shiny just all, object, right? <laughs> yeah, shiny object, a hundred percent, Andrew. So, mm-hmm. for me, it was like trying to figure out which one I wanted to focus on, and mm-hmm. then don't 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 look at too much things at once. Like just focus on that one, get a deal done, uh, whether it be like a wholesale deal. And then if you figure out that that's not what you want to do, transition to something else. But always give yourself some time to actually learn the processes of whichever avenue of real estate you want to do. So definitely, you know, just educate yourself. And secondly, you know, find an avenue that you're passionate about and just focus on that one avenue. I would say Mm -hmm. that, you know, if you're just starting, that's the most important. And then also like finding a mentor, like, you know, connecting with people like Andrew is like a great idea. Like, you know, people that are willing to give back and, you know, just share their journey. You know, that was huge. Like for me, when I was just getting started, you know, uh, in my junior and senior year of college, I actually was would drive up about an hour um, to Birmingham, you know, to intern with a real estate agent who was also an investor. And from that experience, you know, that was two years of me, you know, uh, trading time, but I also getting a lot of experience. So I felt more comfortable actually jumping into it full time after that. Oh, definitely. That's a great, that's actually great advice to do that. So looking back, yeah, it'd be nice to do a shadow somebody. That'd be a great way to learn. <laughs> so now you, uh, so you said you were wholesaling, uh, looking at rentals, also multifamily. What mm-hmm. made you decide on multifamily? And then I guess the second part of the question is, I know you had started passively as well. What made you go active? Got you. So I started like wholesaling. Um, I did like a few deals doing that. And mainly like my transition to multifamily was with a small multifamily, so a duplex. And just the the the, the game changer for me was on that wholesale deal, the first one I did, 
um, I didn't really do it the way they, t- they teach you. They say, you know, you find your buyer first right. and then you find the deal. Mm. I just wanted to get a real estate deal. <laughs> so I was, just, I was just like, you know what, let me just find a deal. I'll figure everything else out. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I ended up getting this property under contract. It's just way overpriced and I'm having to work, you know, uh, backwards on it. Right. So right. now, now I'm trying to find a buyer. I'm having people telling me it's overpriced. So I'm having to go back to the seller and try to renegotiate. Long story short, mm-hmm. I ended up making about $500 assignment fee on this deal after it was all said and done. Uh-huh. And you know, that was kind of discouraging, but I was like, okay, yeah, it's money. Right. But at the time I had the opportunity to look at some rentals cause I, I did have some money saved and I had the opportunity to buy a duplex from another mentor I had. And when I closed that deal, with the security deposit and the first month's rent, it was about like a $950, $950. So I looked at the two and I was like, yo, I just busted my butt for the past <laughs> two and a half months trying to close this whole city. I make 500 bucks. I didn't do nothing but buy this property and I just made like 950 bucks. Just signing the signature, I'm getting yeah. a check. So <laughs> that was a game changer for me. After that, I was like, you know what? Yeah. This is the part of real estate I want to get in. And that was back mm-hmm. in 2017. And that's all I've looked at since, man. Yeah. So um, now my transition into larger multifamily on the passive side was after I did another deal after this duplex, which was a fourplex, I ran out of money. So I didn't have any more working capital. I didn't have any more like capital to put into buying a new deal. Right. So it turns out the, the guy I bought the fourplex from, he owned about 300 apartment complexes in the area. Oh, wow. So I reached out to him and I said, how, how, would I, how can we work together or how can we collaborate you know, to where I can get into a deal like these deals you're doing. Mm-hmm. And he was like, okay, well, do you have any money? I was like, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then he was like, okay, well, what can you do? Right. right. So he was like, can you, can you, can you find a deal? So I was like, yeah, I can find a deal. Keep in mind at this point, I don't know how to find a multifamily deal. <laughs> but I was like, you know what? The opportunities out there, I'll figure it out. Yep. So literally the next like three months, all I did like from like dust to dawn, like I literally just was, uh, driving properties, looking at properties, taking out addresses, reaching out to owners. And I did that until I found a 32 unit deal. We ended up partnering on it. I got a small piece of the GP. I was more like a passive, a passive partner. So, you know, not, not in, not in the active side, but I was able to, it was, it was a good experience for me because I was able to put that on my resume and say, I, you know, co-GP to deal, Mm -hmm. but they kind of told me straight, uh, like from the get go, like it's going to be like more of a short term thing. And about a year's time, we'll buy you out and you can use that money to go ahead and do your own deal as a lead sponsor. So I found a a 32 unit deal that way, did a deal with them, a 75 unit deal that way, did a deal with them. And, uh, about a year after that in 2019, I got bought out of that, uh, operating group and, got some capital from that. And I used that paired with my two family members and we purchased a 36 unit deal where I was the lead sponsor. And that was the one where I was able to turn it from a 400 K when we purchased it to as is value of 1,560,000. Wow. That's incredible, man. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. yeah thank you. Thank you. Story. <laughs> you yeah. only made 500 bucks in that wholesale, but I bet the, the yes. lessons were invaluable, right? Yeah. I mean, like, so, so this is the thing too, Andrew, right? Like we, we get fed so much things like day to day, like everyone is trying to sell you something nowadays. Right. And it's right. like, what's, what's real. Yeah. So like for me, just getting that deal done showed me that, Hey, real estate is real. Like this is something that, you know, actually can put, you know, money on the table for me. This isn't something where I'm speculating and potentially this is how much you can make, but you mm-hmm. know, I have bills each month. Everyone has bills each month. Yeah. So I wanted to find something to where I'm getting money each month to pay my bills, right? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So, I mean, that first deal was like, okay, well, this is cool. And then once I got the duplex and I saw it was like residual income. So <laughs> now you're going from having to actively work to, ha- yes, to having that passive income. Mm-hmm. And then now it's like, okay, how do I scale this thing out? And then yeah. that's how I gravitated towards like larger multifamily. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, do you still have the two unit and the four unit or did you sell those? Yes. Yes. Actually, I'm in my two unit right now. So oh, I'm not just no. talking like this is what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So I, yes. Yes. I'm house hacking. So I, I live in one side. I run the other side to my property manager. You know, I own a oh, manager wow. company as well. So she runs the other side for me. Great neighbor. I went to college yeah. with her and, she, you know, she's been working with me for years now. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it worked out for me. And uh, that, that, that was able, you know, just making a transition to, moving to duplex and house hack it, I was able to lower my expenses enough to where I can do real estate full time. See, mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's two ways to get out of the rat race, right? In my opinion, like you can 
find a way to increase your income, but you can also find a way to lower your expenses. And right. it's even better if you can do both at once. Exactly. So for me, like, yes, for me, like buying that duplex was, you know, answering two questions at once. Like I'm, I'm finding a way to increase my income, like through cash flow, mm-hmm. and then also lower my expenses because at the time I was paying like $1,200 in rent. So transitioning from paying $1,200 in rent to now getting a cash, the cash flow money back in the bank, about $120 to $150 a month to live here. Right. right? So and now, the you know, every month, the equity pay down. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, that's the name of the game is the financial freedom. That's, uh, that's kind of what we try to touch on on this show. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm glad you mentioned that actually, because my next question for you was, uh, I always ask everybody, what would be your top strategy for creating a passive income stream? Mm-hmm. So it so it depends on what walk of life you're in. Um, definitely, I, I I'm a firm believer in multifamily. You know, this is an asset class I'm focused on, and it's multiple ways to get into this space. So like you just just hearing my you know just me sharing my story recently, you see like I didn't really have any money to invest in my first larger multifamily like the 32 unit, but I found a way to add value. So right. it, whether it be you're the person that's going out and finding the deal. Or you may be in a situation where you have like a, a, a really good job, like a really good nine to five, and you have a lot of money that you saved up and you can actually get in a deal by investing with someone and becoming an investment partner. Mm-hmm. So there's multiple ways to get in. I mean, you can go the sweat equity route, or if you have some money, you can actually invest in the deal, get all the benefits of real estate. And then you could even possibly learn enough to where you can go out and do your own deal if, you, if that's what you want to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. So plenty of ways to get in. Just action is the main thing is what I've taken away from your, your story there. Yes. Yes. It's, yeah. For me, it was like, I went the burn, what they say, like burn your ships method. So, you know, I was straight out of college and I had a decision to make. I was like, you know, uh, do I go ahead and try to get my CPA or do I just take the six months of the living expenses and just move to Birmingham and like try to figure out this real estate thing out. So like for me, you know, just taking action. Right. So once you figure out what you want to do, you know, that should be your priority. You know, you should figure out like how to get a deal done, whatever that is, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Now I got to just bring up, I saw you were just on the real estate guy stage for the syndication event. Those guys are amazing and, and huge in the industry. So congratulations for, for getting up there and being able to share your story. That's impressive. Yes, yes. Real estate guys, they're awesome. Uh, that was the second time, you know, I went to their event. And I was able to get on stage this time. And it's a, it's a cool story with that too, if you want to, if you want me to talk about yeah, it a little definitely. bit of how that happened. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, so the, the day before they had like a nice little like cock, uh, cocktail mixer after uh, the, the day one event. And I just was networking, you know, just sharing my story. And one, uh, one of the real estate guys, uh, Robert Helms, he had overheard, you know, uh, you know, just me just share my story. And uh, he bought his partner, Russell, over as well, right? Mm -hmm. So I just was kind of sharing with them like how I got into the game and then also how uh, the event I went to, the same event I went to two years ago, I actually had two investors that put in about uh, collectively about like uh, 200K in uh, my current deal that I met at this event, like just oh, wow. you know talking and getting to know them organically, right? Yep. So um, just telling them about that. And then they said like, hey, we may bring you on stage. Keep in mind, I'm just thinking they're being nice, right? You know, because they 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 nice guys, right? They're really uh-huh. nice guys. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, yeah, that's cool. And he was like, okay, we may or may not do it. So I was like, yeah, well, I'll be ready regardless. So it's for me, it's always about taking an action, being ready, you know, if I have an opportunity. So the next day, Andrew, uh, I'm sitting down in the back of the room and they're like, okay, well, now we have someone special we want to bring on stage is Eddie, right? And then, now I'm standing up, I'm looking, I'm looking around the room. I'm like, okay, I hope it's another Eddie in this room because I'm, <laughs> I'm not I'm not ready to do this, right? But realized no one else was standing up. So I said, okay, I guess they'd be me. And I just ran up and ran to the stage and was able to, you know, just use that platform to kind of add value and just uh, share my story a little bit. So it was a great experience. It was about a room of 280 people. And uh-huh. I was able to, you know, get a lot of connections from that, you know, mm-hmm. add a lot of people to my network, you know, yeah. and it just was a great opportunity. Yeah, those are great events. I uh, I haven't been to one last year, but I'm, I plan on going to their next one. So mm-hmm. I will see you there because I'm going to be at yeah, the next absolutely. one too. We'll see you yeah. <laughs> Our goal setting one, I want to go to that too. I heard that's really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, so one other question I had for you was, if you could 
have our audience have one takeaway for them to really absorb from this interview, what would that be, you think? Mm -hmm. So I would say like one main takeaway, um, if I had to choose, you know, because I definitely say probably, you know, just focus, right? You, like mm -hmm. focus, focus on what asset class or what, what venue, like what avenue of, of real estate you want to do. And don't look at too much other things until you have uh, completed a transaction in that point, because it's easy for you to look at multiple strategies and not be able to execute on any of them because your time is just spread too thin. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, if you could just take that time to just focus on one, for me, it didn't start with multifamily. It was actually wholesaling, but I said, Hey, I, you know, I want to focus on wholesaling for the next three months and I'm not going to look at anything else. And I was able to get a, a property on contract within the next two weeks and then close it within you know, two and a half months. So, mm -hmm. you know, but that was all from like, just focus. Right. So, you know, my, what I would encourage the listeners is to definitely like just focus, you know, and once you find like what you want to do, like don't stop until you get that first deal done. And then once that deal is done, maybe exploring other things. But if you could just focus mm -hmm. in on one thing, you know, you can get uh, quicker results in my opinion. Yeah, that's great advice. I've definitely fallen victim to the uh, shiny object syndrome as well before. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. You can't. We, have, we, we all have. Exactly. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Easy to do. laughs> yeah. So, uh, so we're going to get into our five to thrive section. But before we do that, what's the best way for people to reach out to you if they want to get in contact with you? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, if they want to reach me by email, it's just e. And then my last name, S-Y-M-M-O-N-E-T-T -T at gmail.com. I'm on all social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram is the ones I go on the most. It's just my name, uh, Eddie Simonette. Uh, and then also I have a YouTube channel with that same name, Eddie Simonette, where I have a lot of content. So uh, definitely uh, check those out. Great. We'll put the links uh, in the show notes as well so people can find those. Okay. All Thank right. you. Yeah, yeah. So now we're getting to our five to thrive. So this is basically just a word association game. So I'm going to just rapid fire five words or phrases. And all you do is just tell me the first word or phrase that pops into your mind, but you cannot repeat your answer. Okay. okay. Got you. All right. So the first one is multifamily. Freedom. Mm. Passive income. Being on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Mindset. Uh... It definitely focus. Mm -hmm. Real estate tax breaks. Our segregation. <laughs> <laughs> and cash flow is the last one. My way of life. Love it, man. Well, Eddie, it's thank been you. an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Really appreciate you coming on. Nah, thank you, Andrew. I appreciate the opportunity, man. It's always a blast. Thank you. Talk to you soon.